Hi, you guys. Okay, The Handmaid's Tale, Season 4, Episode 6. Okay, picking up where we left off. June is still shell-shocked. She's looking for Janine. And Mora is like, oh my God, June, I can't believe I found you. I came here to rescue you and I found you. But at the moment, all June can think about is finding Janine. Which I can understand because I'm concerned too as to where Janine could be. Mora says to June, look, you're hurt, you need help. June is still just looking for Janine. So Mora said, you know what? If Janine needed help, she went this way and we should all go this way. Let's go this way, June. Go find her, and when we get there, maybe you can get looked after as well. June says, okay. So, Mara gets June on the truck, and her me- one of her friends there is a medic. Um, one of the guys that came with Mara. So, Mara is asking her him, will June be okay? And he said, you know, she looks okay right now, but when I get back to the camp, we'll look her o- over even more. Mora is very concerned, and she is not letting June go. It's, she tells June, we're going to get you some help. And June, she noticed, like, Mora? And Mora like, yes, June, it's me, it's me, June. Both women are giddy over seeing each other, the reunion, I should say. And then it all stopped, because June is like, hold up. No, 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 no. Why are you here? And Mora tells her, look, I came back to find you and I found you. And June is like, no, it's not safe here. It's not safe. June goes on to say, you're crazy. It's not safe here. You shouldn't have came here. And Mora said, now that I found you, I'm not letting you go. I'm going to take care of you and I got you. And this like broke me down. Okay. I'm like, this is so fucking sweet, but where's Janine? Okay, so they arrive at the refugee camp and Mora sees her girlfriend. And that's how Mora winds up over there. Because I was wondering, like, how the hell did Mora wind up over here if if it's not a dream? And remember when Mora was having dinner on the porch with her girlfriend and her girlfriend asked her to come along. That's where she was asking Mora to come along to. Okay, I see now. Anywho, she tells her girlfriend that she found June and her girlfriend, you know, of course, Maura told told her everything about June. She's happy that she found June and um, everyone is packing up. So Maura's like, what's going on? And she said, we have to get out of here immediately. They're going to bomb again. Maura said, I know what the rules is, but this is June. She saved all those kids. And her girlfriend tells her, look, you're going to have to, we're going to have to go back to Canada and work on getting June back. And Maura's like, no way. That's not going to happen. Her girlfriend was trying to explain to her that they Their mission is to come bring food, aid, medical supplies for people. So if they take June and they're going to risk everything for everyone else and it's just not worth it. And this is how leaders has to plan. They have to think about the greater good, the bigger picture. Ultimately, she's. She tells Mora, like, look, I'm sorry, it can't be done. And this is very sad because not only is it June, it's, you know, many other people that was at this camp and they can't go. They're begging them to take them with them and they they have to leave these people out here to fend for themselves. And hopefully they find a safe place that they can, you know, go and hide and you know, hopefully they survive it. And it's just sad. Mora, on the other hand, she said, fuck that. I'm a friend to the end. Pulls June to the side and she tells her, look, June, you're going to have to run on this boat. Okay. So June is still kind of delirious. And she's like, oh, um, I need to find Janine. Mora says to June, for fuck's sakes, Janine is probably dead. And if you stay here, you're going to be dead too. Get your ass on that boat now. June keeps saying no and keep pushing to go the other way. Mora is about to break down. She's like, don't do this to me. Don't make me leave you again. Don't do it. June then tells Mora, you're not going to make me leave Hannah. Mora stops. She's like, Hannah, you seen her? Where is she? June said, I don't know. So Mora said, well, how do you know where to find her? 
Did you even look at yourself? You're beat the fuck up. You don't know where she is. June tells Morris she was scared of me. And Morris said, well, that means she's safer without you. Mora goes on to say, if you go looking for her, they're going to chase you down. They're, and they're going to kill you right in front of her. You really love her. Then leave her behind. Come to Canada. And we'll fight. We'll all fight from Canada. I'll be there. Luke. Emily. Rita. Everyone that loves you is there. Nicole. So June is like, okay, okay. Her and Maura is just a running for that boat. Did you ever think that you would see the day that June actually leaves Gilead? No, because I was like, this is the last season I'm watching this if they do not get out of bondage. Once on the boat, Maura put uh, June in a closet and she told her to stay there till she come back. And now we're getting a backstory about Maura and June. It shows how they had, before Gilead, their loving but complicated friendship. First thing we see uh, the two roommates, I'm assuming they are roommates, um, and they're just chilling, having girl talk, enjoying their apartment. And June is pouring up mimosas, and she get a phone call for what I presume is Luke. So you know is that uh, Maura gave her that look like... Yeah, girl, I go on and answer it because I know, already know how you is about him. So June just looked at her phone and she like, nah, not today. And she ignored the call. Well, let me tell you something right now. I love me, my girlfriends and all. But I'm telling you, every time my man calls, I'm answering that phone. However, if it's a girl's night out, my girls got me. So I see where June is coming from right now. Who knows? She, she probably called him back later. Anyway, we bump ahead with the flashbacks. And um, now we see that June is moving out. Her fiance, Luke. And this is rubbing more the wrong way. She got the stink face on. And if you ever been close with a BFF, we all know this feeling. We feel like we're losing our best friend. Maura implies that Luke just may cheat on June if June can't produce a baby like he did his ex-wife. June asks Maura, how do you know all this because you've been married like how many times? June goes on to say that she will not be like Luke's ex-wife because they fought over everything, not only the fact that she couldn't get pregnant. Maura's like, yeah, whatever, girl. Don't take my picture. That's my picture. Okay, back on the boat, Maura runs into her girlfriend, Una. I think that's her name, Una. And um, Una is asking her how does she feel seeing everything up close and personal. And Maura's like, that ain't about nothing. I done seen stuff suffering up close and personal una apologizes for not being able to bring june along and Maura's like mm -hmm, it ain't about nothing that's it's cool una says look we're nearly home after this port inspection it's just about 10 hours to canada so Maura's like excuse me what port inspection and she said yeah gilead they come and they inspect to make sure the whole boat is clean so this is when Maura just tells the truth she tells her that she brought june along anyway after she told her not to because that's what real g's do this caused some ruckus well not a ruckus just a meeting and they're trying to decide what they're going to do with june una says i have a lot of respect for june but because I'm team leader, I have to take the bulk of the responsibility and I would like to hear everyone what everyone has to say about this. Surprisingly, everyone was like trying to not touch it, like trying to take their hands off of it. Yes, I understand what Una is saying, but come on now, like... <laughs> June has to be a worldwide savior around here now. But Maura says, since it's my fault, I'll take the fall for it. And everyone is in trying to fuss about who's going, what to do, what not to do. And June said, well, look, just turn me in. I'll turn myself in. That, that, let's just do that. Of course, Maura is against this. She's trying to convince June not to do it. She's like, you came all the way this way just to, what, turn back around? While everyone else is looking like bitch okay go and turn yourself in because you messy this is messy okay so they're approaching the checkpoint for the gilead soldiers to come on so um soon just right before they get to the point 
uh, Una decides, okay, we're going to get her ID, change her clothes, and make sure she doesn't fuck this up. They get the soldiers check everyone identification. They're doing a check thing. They get to June. And they ask her her name. And... You would think that being as though she started all this damn trouble in Gilead, that she would be public enemy number one. However, I guess because Gilead doesn't use the technology and everything, that things may get swept under the radar. Anyway, June tells them Rachel Smith. So the officer asks her why she, what's wrong with her? Is anything wrong? Because she's all beat the fuck up. And June freezes. She cannot say anything. And I'm not going to be too hard on June right about now because she's definitely traumatized i mean this haven't even been a full day and look at everything that she's been through so more steps in and she tells the officer it's from the commotion that was going on in chicago and you know she, it was just a mess out there things was flying everywhere june got caught up in it she tells the officer that if he had family back there that he should pray for them and this worked they are all clear to set sail to canada so we get another flashback and this time is when june is moving in with luke moving day june asks luke did you and annie have files Luke said, no, it wasn't that type of wetting. And we asked him, so what type of wetting was it? Like in a church? Like through sickness and health, better or worse, things like that? Luke asks her, babe, what's going on? Our marriage will not be that marriage. Luke goes to grab a box and June said, hey, hold up. Be careful with that. That's a stolen picture in there. June stole more picture after she told her not to take her picture. We see just like June is guarded with her best friend's picture. You can see that that June has let her best friend get inside her head. And because of what her best friend told her, she feels like that she has to guard herself when it comes to Luke. June asks Luke, I know that you, you had a problem with Annie not getting pregnant. What if that happened to me? What if I can't get pregnant? And Luke is like, what? Like, I do want kids, but I also want you. He tells June, I'm a total different person than I was back then. June tells him, I'm just afraid of disappointing you. And he tells her, look, you can't, dis you're not going to disappoint me. And June asks him, well, what if I turn out to be something totally different than what I am now? And he said, well, I will just have to learn to love that different person. Okay, back on the boat, Mora and Una is arguing about, of course, Mora doing what Una told her not to do by bringing June on the boat. Maura says to Una, I don't understand how you can expect me to leave her behind. And Una tells Maura that you don't think I ever have anyone that I had to leave behind? I have to make those hard choices every mission. Choices that keep me up at night. Maura tells Una, well, I just wish this didn't have to be about us. So Una said, girl, please don't make this longer than it have to be. And Mara asks, well, will I be able to see you in the office? And Una said, girl, there will be no office after this. June overhears this and her ass go, goes to the uh, uh, lifeboat, I think this is, a lifeboat. And she's trying to take the lifeboat off, talking about she getting in the ocean and going back to Gilead. Girl, shut the fuck up. Of course, Mora is trying to stop her and June, being June, she is determined to get this goddamn boat off. Mora said, fine, you want to go back? Then the both of us are going back. Come on, let's go. This make June say, look, stop it. No, you can't do this. Mora tells her, look, I didn't bring you all this way just for you to turn back. And June says, I told you that I need to stay there for Hannah and you manipulated me. Maura said, you're a fucking lie. I saved your life. And that's what I'm going with more on this one. Fuck that. It was no manipulation. Then what do you do, June, when you try to convince people to do things your way? Is that manipulation? In my opinion, I think that's that selfish shit from June. June feels tricked and she feels like she's never going to see Hannah again. So this sits with Maura and she's like, hold up. What happened? June goes on to tell Maura everything that happened. June goes on to say there was nothing that I can do to help her. She couldn't recognize me. She was scared of me. This is all my fault. And Maura tells her, no, none of this is your fault. And we all know that it's not June's fault. Yes, June has made things 
she pushed a bar and things didn't have to go down the way it did necessarily but it's definitely not her fault it's the system it's a system june is carrying this heavy burden and she asks more how can i return without her how can i go there without her man i felt this as a mother i felt it because as a as a mother like june she feels like she can burn this earth down for her baby every mother feels that way and because June could not fulfill her mission in finding Hannah and bringing Hannah with her, she felt defeated. And Maura tells June, June, nobody expects you to have her. They're waiting for a person and not a superhero. June is also feeling guilty that she got all those other kids out, but not her Hannah. She feels like because she is Hannah's mother, that she should be the one to save her. She said that's a job of a mother to protect. And how could she go back to Luke and she does not have her? She said, how could she go to Luke and tell him that everything that happened to Hannah is because of her fault? June is like, he's never going to forgive me. He's never going to forgive me. So Morris said, no, no, that's Gilead talk and which it is. All these years he's been waiting for you. All these years, he's never given up. Now it's time for you to have a little faith too. And June, she's like, no, no. I know what he can and cannot take. And Maura said, well, why won't you just give it a chance and see? I very much enjoyed this exchange. We got to see how June, the burden she was feeling. We always knew it was, everything was because of Hannah. But to for June to actually release everything, to talk about it, I mean, I, I absolutely love it. And I have sympathy for her because I'm a mother. And we get another flashback of June. She tells Luke that she's pregnant and they're overjoyed. And we see a lot of their beautiful moments together as a family. They have finally arrived in Canada. And June is kind of nervous. So June pulls it together and she tells uh, Maura, look, I'm okay. We can do this. Luke is just uh, running down them steps. And June, she looks at her reflection in the mirror. And this may be the first time that she actually looked at herself to see if she's, you know, like sexy for her man. When you're going through all that stuff she was going through in Gilead, she wasn't worried about no none of that. Okay. So when Luke walks in, it is awkward and june she comes out with it and she says i'm sorry i don't have her i'm sorry it's just me i'm sorry i'm sorry and luke just hugs her and i mean i broke down i broke down baby we see june walk off the boat onto freedom land thank you baby i feel like her and luke will <sighs> eventually separate june is a totally different person than she was before gilead she didn't really show us much of what luke was doing in his personal life but june life ever since she they separated she's been fighting fighting for her daughter fighting for her freedom i think that's just going to mold her into a different person and i don't think luke can handle it to be honest june fuck around and might go back to gilead and that's what i really think gonna happen i think that she's definitely gonna go back i think she's definitely gonna go to back to chicago we didn't even see the nighthawks and they was talking about them a lot so they ain't talking about them for nothing i think that we're gonna revisit them well that's it for this episode and i'll catch you guys on the next one bye